<laughs> Hello. 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 Am I on? <laughs> Hi. Sorry. Okay. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people. Nine people. Eight people. What should we do? Would you guys like to like get in a circle and have a conversation about collaboration? Or would you like to see a talk as though the room is full of people? Which would be weird. I'm just going to learn this stuff for myself. I don't see any of the people that I work with actually doing this stuff. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what. How about if you guys move up and I'll run through the talk and then we'll have a conversation. How's that sound? That would be really helpful to me because then I would have people to look at. <laughs> um, I'm not big on well-rehearsed talks anyway, so pretty much going to be a conversation regardless. Pardon me? No, I don't mind. What are you looking for? What's he look? What's she looking for? They. What are they looking for? A router? Is that it? Okay. <laughs> okay, why are we here? We are here to talk about collaboration. Um, and I'm, I wonder if I can do this with no notes. That would be really cool. Yeah, I'm going to try that. Okay, because I have notes on my screen, but screw that. We live in this culture where we talk about cooperation, right? We talk about uh, everybody working together to pull their own weight and um, to contribute, right? And uh, to act together for a common purpose. And cooperation is really cool, but it has some limitations. And I want to talk about what those limitations are and how you can go beyond that. I made some math. <laughs> Okay, so these are these are vectors, and we're going to do some vector addition. I hope it's not offensive. <laughs> okay, so let's say you have a goal, and it's a shared goal, right? Common purpose, and you know what that is. Like, that's already hard, but you've got it simplified down to a one-dimensional common purpose. And one person is all gung-ho, and so they put that much effort toward it, whatever that number is. And person two is pretty gung-ho and gets it, and so together they put the sum of their of their efforts toward it, right? Then you add a third person who kind of likes the idea, but they don't really know how to do it. So they only contribute a little bit, right? Now your total, <coughs> excuse me, forward movement. <coughs> oh God, that was worse. I was trying to cover it, <laughs> failed. Anyway, so now you have a total forward movement, that's the sum of those. But then you add a fourth person, and the fourth, where's the fourth person? There, the fourth person, and their effort is not quite so positive, and the reason is because they don't really understand what you're doing, right? So they're kind of dragging you down. So your total is smaller. And you add a fifth person who's like really not getting it and not really convinced, and their effort's even smaller, and you add a sixth person who's actually pissed off, and their effort is way negative, and so now you have six people working on the same thing, and you have less forward movement than when you had three, right? Have you ever experienced that? Like on a team, like it grows? and the forward movement shrinks. <laughs> so but that's when you add more people, right? So collaboration is like cooperation plus rainbows. <laughs> I had a really hard time finding, like, I was looking at rainbow, rainbow sh shitting unicorns, and I was like, I hate these so much I can't even use them sarcastically. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to talk about how to make collaboration happen and why. Um, because collaboration is something that lets you create something bigger than the sum of the parts instead of smaller. So there are basically three things I want to talk about with regard to um, collaboration. There are lots of factors, but there are three that I want to cover. They are um, ensuring that all the voices are heard so that everybody's involved. And part of the reason for this is that um, People are quiet, right? And sometimes quiet people are really smart. And sometimes loud people are not so smart. <laughs> and so you end up with a situation where the people making the decision are the ones that have more voice. 
right, or more pushiness, which is often like the opposite of what you want. Um, so it's important to make sure that everybody's being heard. It's also important that you're concentrating on building new solutions. We like to put up ideas, right, and then vote on them and pick the best one. That gives us the best one person could come up with, right, which is better than only one person coming up with an idea and being stuck with it. Competition is good. But what's better is emergence, the ability to create whole new ideas. And we do that by putting ideas up and then letting them evolve and shift, right? That's how new ideas emerge. And then finally, by seeking consensus. And the reason you want to seek consensus is because when you're doing the cooperation thing and somebody's decided what the goal is and then everybody puts whatever effort toward it that they want to, which is either a lot of forward effort or some backwards effort, when you seek consensus, you have buy-in from everybody. Buy-in from everybody means you're getting lots of forward pull, right? You don't have anybody dragging you down. You don't have anybody resisting. <clears throat> so it's important to have a consensus. And now I want to talk about how to accomplish those things. <coughs> I have to cough, and I don't know how to mute this. Would you like to tell me how to mute it? Please. OK. I mean, I know you can hear me cough, but it's not as bad. All right, so how do you do this? How do you make sure all voices are heard? There's lots of ways to do this. One way is to go around and ask people, right? You have, you have two tasks. One is you have to quiet the loud people. And another is that you have to encourage the quiet people to speak up. So you can ask people directly if you're facilitating. You can say, you know, what do you think, right? And you get feedback that way. There's a trick that an Agile coach taught me, which is that if somebody is loud and they're repeating something over and over again, then they won't stop. If you somehow convince them that you've heard them, um, his trick is to walk up, like if people are in a circle, walk up and just put your hand on their shoulder. They stop doing that. It's really weird. <laughs> OK, little secret tricks. Um, there's a thing called fist to five. Have any of you heard of that? So fist to five is a, it's, so it's misused as a voting mechanism, right? You bring up an idea and you want to find out if we're all on the same page, right? I know what we should do. Let's, you know, do such and such to the server, right? And you're in a room full of people and two people are like, yes. And one person's not saying anything because they never say anything. And then there's other people who are sort of nodding politely. At that point, you can ask. Um, and a fist to five is when everybody goes, like whatever, they raise up some fingers, OK? Five fingers means I'm totally in total agreement with this. And uh, three fingers means I have reservations. A fist means I'm so uncomfortable that I actively think this is a really bad idea and I want to stop conversation on it or I want to, you know, I would block it. I actually talked to a group of people who say, in our, in our group, a fist means fuck you. Am I allowed to say that? It's too late. Too late. I said it. OK. Um, it means you're an asshole. That's what he said to me. And I'm like, OK, let's go back. Collaboration is when you want to hear what everybody thinks, right? <laughs> so you have to be OK with a fist, right? It has to be OK to say, I'm this uncomfortable, right? That's part of being open to the actual information that you want to get. Anyway, that's one option for getting people's voices heard. Quiet people will give you some response on a fist of five. Because they're not going to lie, right? And they have to do something. So the truth comes out. The second thing is building new ideas. Building new ideas is like the hardest part of collaboration, for some people anyway. Um, because what you have to do is you have to be willing to throw things out and be wrong a lot. You have to be willing to be just wrong. But we're wrong all the time. Like everything we do, we guess, and then we criticize it, and we come up with better solutions all the time, right? Like, I think this is the strongest bridge we can build. Somebody said that at some time. Right? Now we have much stronger bridges, and that's because they were wrong. And so far, like, we've built really strong bridges, but we haven't built the strongest bridge you can because we're wrong all the time. You have to be willing to be wrong. You have to be willing to put your ideas out there and have them shift and change when they're criticized. You have to welcome that. I'll leave that there for now. Um, seeking consensus. How do you seek consensus? 
<laughs> you go to Mark's talk tomorrow at 4, and he'll tell you how to seek consensus. What I really want to say is that um, the hard part of seeking consensus is convincing the other people in the room that it's important. But it's, it's really about listening to every single voice. Because, like I said, if you're, not, if you're not getting consensus, what you're getting is people fighting against what you want to have happen. So to seek consensus, you need to clarify your goals, right? You need to make sure everybody's heard. <laughs> and you need to be fallible, repeatedly fallible. There's my diatribe. Yes? <laughs> can, I, can I pause you for a second? This is the last slide, after which we're going to have a discussion. So would that be a good time to talk? OK. There's my diatribe. I will read it to you, because I like reading slides. It's not really about meetings or consensus as a system for solving problems. It's about opening up your own heart, right? It's about not clinging to your ideas, not needing to be right, and letting new ideas emerge. That's really the, the bottom line. OK. So how would you guys feel about, did I do that? <laughs> oh, wow. Well, like this, last time I spoke, I had the, this thing in my phone pocket or on my phone pocket, and so it kept going, <laughs> and it took like half the talk to figure it out. Anyway, so would you guys be up for like making a circle and having a conversation since it's such a small group? I think that would be cool. OK, so my name is Angela Harms, and that's in the book or whatever. And my Twitter handle is also that. So I don't need to put contact information up. OK, let's talk. Wrong, the wrong thing that takes a ton of money, and then you just wasted three months building something that's not any good anyway. So, <laughs> just taking the time to talk about it, like you're building so much value in, in like actually thinking about something before you do it. I think I'm going to back out a little bit just because I think I don't want to be. Um, I think there's a lot of good positive. Uh, I, I don't want to be bringing in like the negative. I think that question. What is really well, but negative. but at the same time, like I think at least part of the talk is about what are the good things. You know, right. what are the good things that can come out of collaboration, and 
maybe, maybe until that's been discussed really strongly, like I don't know if the arguments against it are, yeah. are, are as valuable, right? Yeah, no, and you also don't want the conversation turning into, hey, let's all convince this one guy. That's, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you know, like, like I said, part of it's not necessarily even, you know, Arguing for my position, I'm arguing for what if I said, "Hey, let's do this." Right. And, what your team's going to say. And a somewhat, you know, collaborative and somewhat collaborative environment, like to you know, say, "Let's take it a step further." You know what? Uh, so when I think about teams that I've been involved in, there's always somebody who's got the conversation under control, right? And they, they're saying their piece, and, and they're all like, they're the ones who are like, "Let's just get on with it." I don't care. You know. And then if you want to make a good decision, you've got to get underneath that, right? Because otherwise, you're just going to do with this one person who's all, you know, manic and like in control, the salesman guy, whoever it is. You're going to do what they want all the time, and it's not going to be right all the time, right? They don't even have like thoughtful, it will be right quiet moments, time. right? They're, they're going to have enthusiasm and yeah. energy, but what they're not going to have is like well, all of the other characteristics. Some of those people have. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, some of those people have, and I'm in that, but they at least a good decision. You know, that's another part of the very you always <laughs> do you always care about getting the best decision, or what if? What if the plan is 80% as good as it could have been, and actually that's fine? There is a there's a decision making process that's part of um, collaboration where you go, okay, so this particular part, I don't really care very much. I care that it get done, but I don't care how, and somebody else cares how, and I just go, okay, this is yours. That's that still docs, collaboration. Was that a docs blog like yesterday? He did blog about yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think like how far this slide, or like how perfect does it need to be? It really depends on how like much how important getting into consensus is. It's like three people when you're talking about, you know, the big grand idea of your startup, like you damn well better have consensus. If there's three of you, like you have to have it. <laughs> but like if you're if you're like a group of twenty five people in like the middle of like an eighty five story building where the people like not only is getting consensus are hard, it might not be that important, you know? It depends on what you're working on. Well, like, but that's part and, of collaboration. This is not a talk about consensus, although it's yeah. consensus, right? This is about <laughs> this is about collaboration, and collaboration definitely involves the ability to walk away from a decision that doesn't need you very much. It's like it's like the open space is a little about how you know if you're not contributing, if you're not learning, you go away. Um, she had her hand up. I, I don't know your name, but you were gonna say something. Um, I was just curious if you had any methods to getting around the boss that to collaborate on this, and then at the end, it's well, my original decision was the best anyway. <laughs> 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 Decision kind of culture to collaborate. So, they have these decisions, things about this one problem for like a month, and they still demand them. Well, my decision is still the best one. Why did you have this? Yeah, that's why they try to masquerade their decision as collaborative. Yes, yeah, it's happened. That's really good. Yeah. Run. That's why we go home, meditate, remind yourself that the universe is full of abundance. Is there a guy who just proved that his idea wasn't the best? And is there a higher manager to uh, showcase that to? Not necessarily, but it's like yeah. you're working on something more important than you already had. Right, you already had your mind made up. You still get paid though, right? At least you yeah, can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who wants to all work for rent for money? That's all I had to do was wait for three years. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, actually, there, there's a there's an older way of dealing with that, which I find which I find very valid in some cases, which is if if you see that pattern developing where the boss is giving someone to collaborate on and then and then well the boss is pretending that you're collaborating and you go ahead and pretend you're collaborating and say oh yeah we had some meetings about it and if, you decided I mean, your your way was the right way if, it, <laughs> if it's really fake collaboration and you can't fix it maybe you should just play along with it and stop yeah. and save Save the jumping through hoops. I mean, you really work on the thing you should be working on anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just dodge it. And that, that, depending on the circumstances, might be a perfectly valid way of dealing with it, as stupid as it sounds. Or you could take the best idea and relabel it as his idea. <laughs> 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 
That's absolutely perfect. You were right all along. That's that's actually a work technique that works. Like I mean, when, when you say when you when you say to somebody when you say to somebody you know somebody tells you you know I think that you should make this gray and and you go you go back to them a week later and you're like you know I think it was really a great idea that you wanted to make it a grayish blue. Uh, <laughs> and actually, the blue just sounded so good that. I think that maybe we should just go ahead and, and make it blue like you said. <laughs> and, and, like if you, I mean, had, and that anybody else had this yeah. experience? I hate it where you've gone amazing. to set it to somebody, <laughs> but when you, you've really gone to somebody and, set, and like rephrased their yeah. idea, like with one difference and been like, that was a great idea and people are like, yeah, yeah thanks. It's been and, even and like a week later, they won't even remember, so. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I would care if I could be honest and, and real and caring, and if I couldn't, then it would just be my accounting done for the people I've gone with for the shoes. Because, um, yeah, working in a place that's, that feels like that's the kind of constant, like, soul sucking that would just get you, you know, so each year. It's, that's how it sounds to me, but it's not like an isolated thing, right? It's not I like ended up a, getting let go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so there's a lot of people that were like, wow, I got shafted. But they couldn't say anything because it was over the 20-person office. So. Is your life better yet? I'm slinging burgers over the problem. Oh. But it makes sense. Yeah. Do you want to work on the Yeah. At least Red Robin's delicious. Yeah. True. I'll bet there's better things. <laughs> so I have a problem. I have a hard time grabbing the floor. It just fit. I always find that I'm in a group and, I, and everybody's trying to say something and I try to be polite and let people say what they want to say and wait for that lull. That, that right. Right. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I mean, about that um, topic change where I yeah. can interject something and I never can get everybody's attention or I say five words and then somebody cuts me off and interrupts. Yeah, so anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Is there a way of establishing a protocol within a, a team to allow people to have their say? Uh, how do you do that? And as a quiet person who maybe isn't being recognized as having this need to say, how do you convey that to a group when you can't even get their attention in the first place? I think it's a great job, by the way. I'm a big fan of talking sticks or like mm -hmm. objects, although people make fun of them and get pissed and yeah, claim that they're not needed, so that's really hard. Stuffed animals. Stuffed animals are really good. You have to, you get you have to stroke stuff. the bunny to talk. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, so Mark, I want to ask you a question. What do you do in a team where you are suggesting a talking device and the team like the loud people on the team are doing that? Because it's not me. And the quiet people are in the corner going. I, and serious, serious answer to that, why are you asking me in particular? I don't know, but okay. I have an idea. Okay. Um, I don't have a, I don't have a completely brilliant idea off the top of my head, but one way I think I would deal with that is, it doesn't always work to say, try it today. Yeah. Or pop yeah. a potato and throw it to someone who's not talking? Well, yeah, that's what, but I, I guess if the question is, how do you get the dominating, sending people to just accept something that doesn't let them run the conversation all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I my approach would be, and I'm not not usually the boss, is say play along with it today, see how it goes. I think because people are more likely to try something and go, oh, that kind of works, than to imagine what it's going to be like and imagine it working. And I'm sorry for the catch you off. Then thirty seconds and it's better for you. But one thing I noticed thing with the people not letting you get into the conversation, it, it seems a lot worse in Ohio than it was in Connecticut where I grew, grew up. Mm -hmm. I've actually seen people where they wouldn't stop talking, so I actually start talking over them. They still wouldn't like, shut up. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And like, yeah, I keep forgetting that could be a regional thing. I mean, you know. That is a lot of people here are just kind of like that. Out here. <laughs> I think on an individual scale, like, for like how one thing to comment on is that, like, when you, like, when you try to forget too, it's like it's really quiet. Like here, the more the more nominated people and more like outgoing people are going to blast in because they're going to talk over you regardless. So they like launch in to a like probably like forty percent louder volume than like 
you guys have started like entering conversation with. And, like I'm kind of quiet. I like to be quiet. I like not to barge in, but like you just kind of have to. Like, if I want to say this, I want to say it loudly. Because people will stop. <laughs> you know, people will not Ooh. jump over me as they try and. So everybody's trying to shoot in as soon as there's that pause. And whoever starts out loudest, <laughs> it's probably the first thing gets it. The way I grew up, though, you shouldn't have to. Yeah, you really shouldn't. Yeah. It sucks. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> well, yeah, it's just like everything you were supposed to be doing as you were brought up. Just be polite. It doesn't yeah. work, does it? Certain things. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Only yeah. loud mouth really gets your way. Well, one of the things this brings up for me is like, um, you were talking about you're not usually the boss. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of times there isn't a boss, right? Right. And so you're faced with a situation where either you're one of the loud ones, in which case you can notice that and like do the kind, caring thing, right, to change the situation using your own energy, yep. right? Or you're one of the quiet ones, in which case you guys drop on a pair and, you know, make it make a change. Because you're not the only quiet one, right? So if you're a quiet one who understands this stuff, and there's another quiet one next to you who doesn't, like, you could actually like, make the world better by finding a way to do it. Just be done. Have you ever tried to use other mechanisms besides like a group circle talking like uh i've done it just a few times for really specific things like if you have a wiki form yep. that both helps Tells. helps make a lot of people less loud because you only got words right and um and a caps lock caps lock. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it also like makes people think about their idea before and so a lot like i do that before i uh propose an idea anyways because yeah. i write it down I'm like wow that was a stupid idea like, and not just like anonymous. email, but yeah, anonymous, yeah. Because right. I think there's a, you got SharePoint there, got it. but there is a spot where you can post things on SharePoint. <laughs> but it is, that's all it is, it's just a disaster. Oh, it's like it's sticky, right? It's sticky notes. We're not it's allowed, sticky. we're FDA regulated, we're not allowed to sticky notes. What? Seriously. Really? Like well, the all the paperwork and all the test processes, if there's a sticky note in there that says, ah, just push the green button, oh, all hell will break loose. <laughs> They've already been out of the or something? No, because we're supposed to follow the procedure. We uh, work on CT scanners. That oh. They, they actually dose humans with radiation, so everything <laughs> has to be by the book. How does it enter into planning or collaboration? <laughs> No, that's just a side thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just sticky notes. And sticky notes are a no-no. <laughs> I, I think I think something. And I mean, you know, one of the things that I've seen on your your uh, tie rate, you know, on your tie rate right here, is a uh, you know sort of changing your own heart. And I think that some of that is I think among other things, I, I've kind of been, I, don't, I don't like it. I take a modest purpose test. Um, three of the four continuums, I am uh, smack dab in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've kind of been on both sides of a lot of these. It almost depends on the situation. If people are quiet, I'll end up becoming a lot of one type of person. But um, in a situation where I've been a quieter person, I think two things happen. Um, uh, if I get cut off or not listened to, my feelings are hurt. Um, and uh, my default behavior is to shut down. I say, well, my my opinion in certain circumstances, my value, my mind. And so, uh, and I think, to me, kind of straddling that fence a little bit, like I think that the change in my own heart, especially if I'm going to be on both sides of that fence, is like I have to change my behavior in each of those situations. I have to value my own opinion enough and think that. Everybody being able to share their opinion enough to say, like, I, I'm going to share my opinion, even if it takes me being interrupted 17 times. Um, and yeah, and when I'm when I'm the one talking, I'm just shut up. <laughs> yeah, um, that's really hard though when you're getting a feeling like you're not valued. It only takes a couple of times for like it to be totally soul crushing for like every other conversation after that too. Yeah. Yeah, if you're the quiet person, if you're if you're naturally quiet and you don't like to speak up, I think sometimes the opposite thing happens is sometimes I'm a little bit annoyed at the quiet person. You know, if it's if it's a fair conversation and the quiet person is being quiet because they like being quiet, they're stealing their ideas, man. 
You know, they, they came with ideas and they're not me? helping. And like, <laughs> what the fuck? You should be saying something. I mean, you've got, you know, don't don't be don't be sandbagging. Yeah, don't don't be. And don't, well, not even so much sandbagging, but don't be. Yeah, yeah, you got this. Yeah, you got the stash of good ideas. And you're not helping. And was like, yeah, you can, you should say something. But what is sandbagging? Oh, holding back. Okay. I think more is holding back and then slamming people with it later. No. Yeah. Well, how come people didn't do my idea? Oh, that happens too, right? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I have ideas, but they're not fully formed and I don't want to say them yet, or I need time to absorb and process what's being put forward. Well, and that's about being willing to be wrong. Well, like, here's my shitty idea, what can we do with that? And you've got a bunch of people I mean, who Sometimes the ideas don't even come to me until five minutes after the meeting. Where right. I don't yeah. get like, the really yeah. good comeback that right. everybody yeah. wants to <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. In the form of a verbal meeting, I mean, if you're an engineer, there's so many possibilities that it'd be, it wouldn't be wise to bring something forward that wouldn't even work. If you hadn't done the research, it wouldn't even work. So, like in a verbal meeting, I wouldn't bring anything up unless it's been that's what was already vetted. Unless there's some research that someone wants to bring a possibility. That's kind of counter yeah. to the whole brainstorming process. Exactly. You shouldn't be afraid to bring something up. Because how else, if you're afraid to bring up an idea because people might laugh at it or something, you're not going to bring up any ideas no, at all. No, it's not going to laugh because it wasn't good in the first place. Well, but you find out and it gets better. That's the thing. If you say, like, you know, why don't we build an elevator to the moon? And then somebody else says, well, you know, it's been demonstrated that that won't work, but we can totally build a rocket. And then somebody's like, oh, a rocket. And then what if we go to Mars instead of the moon, right? Well, I think it depends on whether... you've got, like, new ideas it that didn't on... exist whether you want to have a, a brainstorming process in the first place. Because not not every problem yes. has brainstorming as a preferred way of solving it. Mm -hmm. And especially if it's, if it's a type of thing where it's engineering and you can't even evaluate an idea without spending six weeks in the lab, okay. maybe that's not a good brainstorming environment. Mm -hmm. You know, it depends. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I was wondering how much of that might be culture. I mean, I don't know. <coughs> it's all culture. Well, what I mean is, if that was situational rather than something, well, okay, the question was whether it was situational because it's engineering, but it, could it be situational because of culture at the place where you were? Is it a place where you're expected to only come up with good ideas and not crappy ones or lukewarm ones? It just doesn't work as well if you're presenting ideas that, I mean, it's just a waste of time because the, because the decision will be made at that point, yes. Let's put all our resources into this idea. It's excellent. Yeah, but not the job. It's not the time to create the idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I've already done the creative right. idea. Yeah. But for beers, two weeks before, yeah. we'd yeah. be talking about these things. Right? I think one of the, one of the things that's kind of come up a couple times is, is we're sort of talking about this um, the collaboration happening, but it's kind of within the context of sort of that. Um, I was because kind of when you were talking before, I was wondering like what because to me I think I mean you know for to make collaboration happen, especially for an engineer type, um, to say you know you can't throw out something in the middle of a meeting and expect a a, a well formed answer, you know. So I think in the, I, I mean I just. I wonder if there are other sort of environments or, or techniques aside from for that brainstorming meeting that can be talked about where you say, okay, especially with more of the engineer type, some of the experience screen you might have, you know, examples and models and everything else kind of kind of built out. Like what other environments can you create to get everybody to or ideas involved that's not to be that like flash I guess I'm still not convinced about engineering. The reason is that even if you've done research and you've come up with numbers, right, you've got a design, you've got, you know, all the calculations for stress and whatever, there's still improvements that can be made, right? People can say, hey, did you hear about that new material that's lighter and has more strength, right? And then, like, people can say, well, what if you move this, you know, load bearing thing over here? Well, we have to do some math, but like you still are growing new ideas. And it's that stagnant thing where we think we figure everything out in a little closet 
and then slap it up on the wall, and that's what we do. That keeps us from like, throwing new stuff. It's kind right. of like an idea that's so bad it turns out right. Like, hey, an escalator, and it, and it works out to be better than a rock. You make a scary move. I love well, that's that idea. So right meeting, so yeah. much like, 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 <laughs> this format of like bringing things to a meeting of like, all right, here's my work, here's my evidence. Is like, it's not about let's work together on an idea. It's like, all right, let's all throw an idea and then just pick one person's. Like, it's, meetings are kind of hard because you have to all line up on one page, off everything you're doing, and try and be like, you know, in this closed room where you can't, you can't take ten minutes to think about, it. you can't mm-hmm. take five right. minutes to Google it. Like, Wait, fortunately, the future is bringing us lots of like offline ways of. Discussing and collaborating, like with campfire or something like that. Just if you have an idea, then you can be like, oh, well, I'll wait 10 minutes and then I'll post it or then I'll show that it could even work. And then people can talk about it. We can do 10 more minutes of thinking or whatever we need. Maybe that's what we should do. Instead of having a meeting, we'll just have a funeral while I'll ask Google. <laughs> <laughs> what of the should be the you actually force people to sit down and yeah. talk about that? Yeah. <laughs> Collaboration is also not just. The process of sitting in a meeting and yeah. coming up with an answer that is a shared answer at one person. No, quite, that's the problem solving ish, but you know, there's right. implementation, even collaborating and implementation. There's definitely in software development, a lot of people hate it. Pair programming kind of rocks when you do it right. Am I right? Am I right? Yeah. But it's, it's the ultimate collaboration, it's the ultimate code review, it's, it's constant code review. Um, oh, don't get me started. It is not code review. Yeah, it is. But okay, look up my favorite program you talk online and watch it, and then know that he is wrong. <laughs> no, yo mama. No, yo mama. Yo mama's so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Collaboration has lots of other things besides meetings. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You yeah. know what? Sure? So, collect what? What other things? What other things? Yeah. Implementing so, the decision you made for the meeting. Collaboration is about being willing to be wrong, being fallible, and being curious. That's really, and, and embracing like the contributions of other people around you. It's a whole mindset. It's not, you know, three techniques to use in a meeting, although there are useful techniques. It's really about just like constantly being fallible, constantly being open to correction and new ideas. When do you think that you put the team, like, what team's good above your own, essentially? Like, you're afraid to be wrong in a company or in an environment where if you're wrong, then somebody can poorly at you. But yeah. if you being wrong is trying to help the company go in the right direction, then that's what you'll focus on. People aren't focusing, Tyler said a dumb thing in the meeting today, like, right. you know, like, and that, that really helps encourage the collaboration. Just assuming that kind of mindset will be, will help everyone else to do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. How do you influence your environment? I think culture like really helps a lot. I don't know if you it's it's really hard to create culture, but like mm-hmm. someone that's really compassionate, like that lets people be wrong, because there's a lot of cultures that don't that yeah. focus on but there's like there's always that nugget of awesomeness of like in that idea of like making the stairs move and like <laughs> you still would have said that. Like, like, <laughs> um, I totally agree with that. Yeah. But there's, there's almost always like this a little bit of your idea is, is like there's a heart of it. It's not your idea. And your idea might not even be like a full idea. It's just like, hey, I just thought of this thing five seconds ago. So obviously it's not going to be well formed, but maybe sharing it will help someone else think of something. But you, you know. How many teams like way more awesome just come out of a team where like everybody's willing to be wrong? And really, you just talk about stuff and not have to do it. Oh, what about the like new programmer who comes onto your team, right? The first day at least, at a bare minimum, the first day is trying to avoid the mistakes, right? Trying to make sure it looks like you know what you're doing. And how much time do we waste doing that? There's so much right? fear we there. Spend, like at least a day, probably a week or maybe a month, like hiding <laughs> our ignorance. At least a month. <laughs> Yeah, a lot I'm of shops are doing that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of shops are like that for a long time. I piss my parents off so much because they get stuck, and I'm stuck, and I'm like, "Hey, do you know how to like fix this Git thing that we fucked up?" And they're oh. like, "God, shut the shop up! I'm just gonna Google that." Like, <laughs> this is like four hours, right? And it's just like. <laughs> 
I'm in a room full of people who know get inside and out, and you want me to keep quiet for another four hours. <laughs> no. Okay. You talk about you throw an idea out there that like it was just an idea and you don't know how to make it work or it could be totally wrong. But the amazing thing, like out on the internet, you can just throw it out there like, hey, I'm on a horrible Nintendo 64. <laughs> That'd be totally impossible to make. And, but there's people out there that can make that happen and redesign the case, cut it, put it together, and like a week later they turn around like, hey, yeah, check it out. That's all. Awesome. Read that word word because that's not on any other system. Huh? I think there's one out there already. That's what made me think about it. Someone actually take that and make one. Yeah. Um, where I'm working at is a new department. We're doing repairs, and uh, my concern is about losing the department and losing my job ultimately because we have this one new guy who's green, like really green, and supposed to be on top of the engineer. Uh, we're, we got a lot of stuff coming in that's brand new from the manufacturers. It's failing. Like we're checking it before we send it out to the customers out in the field. And it's failing. So it's like, well, they can't even make new parts good. We can't trust them to do the repairs. We want to take over the repairs on these parts. Well, these guys have been doing it for so long. It's their baby. And, you know, we're going to be stepping on their toes if we try to take those repairs away from them and all the money away from them. It's the wrong decision though. You should be instead of saying let's take it over for them and say let's get with them and show them. Right. And the autopsy engineer who's the green guy is supposed to be able to convey that and he's not. So far he's managed to piss off like three different companies that we get parts from. <laughs> and, and as a result from that is like well a collimeter is one of the things that we do. Now we're not allowed to calibrate. We're not allowed to recalibrate it, we're not allowed to change the little love joy couplers in it to make them work again. Who collaborated on that decision? <laughs> I don't think there was any collaboration on it. I think they were like, hey, you're the autopsy engineer. Talk to those guys and see about getting it repaired. There you go. I think you should bring up, I think we need to rethink this decision not to calibrate. No, I was with them when we met with the power supply guys, and uh, he asked like all the wrong questions. Uh, they obviously told, knew right off the bat and talking to them that this guy was green, and then later on I found out those weren't even the guys that did the power supplies. They were just a, uh, a middleman. So what's the question? So what can I do about that? Because you know, if this guy's so green, he's going to keep pissing people off. My department's going to fail. You know, stop your stop the oppression of people who are green. <laughs> Mark. Yeah, yeah can be. <laughs> no, I, I do see them like they're treated like lepers a lot of times. If no one wants to be part of the like the thing that blows up, so yeah. like they never do that. So yeah. You, just go and go to lunch with yeah. this guy or here just a lot. That's what I would do. Get them drunk and out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Take the train home. Well, because the more you learn about where he's coming from, the more he's going to be like interested in what you have to say. He's not very interested in what I have to say. Like, I'm supposed to be How working with him. How many I want to speak up in favor of green too, because sometimes that's a good thing. Like if you have the same people always making the same decisions, it, they tend to go the same way and they get to consensus prematurely. So having somebody who is new blood will get you to rethink and explain some of the assumptions that you made and stuff like that. So it, it can be a strength too, just depending on, on how the situation unfolds. We are almost done, um, but there are two people who haven't spoken, and I want to go through the book today. So. Hi. Hi. Well, going off what you just said, um, see, like in my situation, I'm pretty new to my industry and my job, so it, and people with me have like 20 plus years of experience, so it almost feels like, you know, how much can I actually offer in terms like they are, you know, they have a lot more experience and stuff, and it's just weird when we're sitting in a room with a few of us that are like in my age group, and it seems like we can't offer a whole lot to the situation. Is it that they don't want to think? No, not necessarily. Do you have questions? Yeah, if anything, it's probably more questions than it is uh, things to offer. So. And questions can help you offer a little more. Maybe not being used. Like Chris was saying, like if you, if you ask questions and you get to explain them and start to. That's a really cool thing about pair programming. If there are any of that just do it, but how many people are your program? Okay. You're carrying somebody who's new to it, right? They ask you, like, why are you doing this? And you go, well, it's because. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. So, you can ask questions like that and you get people to rethink the 
Donc, du FOK, il peut faire programmer une bonne bonne version de ce Tu as Du FOK, il peut programmer ce que tu peux faire, une bonne version de ce Pair programmer most of the time or all the time when you advocate. Would I advocate? Yeah. Did I say that right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I guess it depends on the people. Right? I'm very happy to be a pair programmer because it moves as well all the time. But I don't know about an advocate because I think somebody might stab you. <laughs> 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 like, it really depends on like a person like, and, and what the problem there is. Like, I've seen people who do really well with it and want to do it all of the time. Definitely, you allowed to do it all the time if they want. Well, it's not, not the same. It's try, if you want to try and get away from, like, all right, I'm programming while this guy watches me, rather than it should be the two of us are programming this thing. And I'm one yeah. like, If you have one keyboard and one mouse, you're doing it entirely wrong. I hate saying that, but really, you, I think yeah. I think having to I think having to be like, all right, stop typing half the keyboard is yeah. bad. You, 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 and then you stop typing when you go. Like if you're, you know. If you're trying to help somebody, like, it's oh, I love passing the keyboard back and forth. Well, uh, if, you, if you, okay, if you're, there's like a, there's a passing back and forth flow that yeah. is useful, right. especially if people aren't really good at it. But the best pair programming experiences I have are when I don't even know when they switch. Like, you can't, like, in the middle of a line, like, you pause to think and the other person's typing and he suddenly, and it's not like you're like, oh god, now you're typing. It's like you don't even notice. That's so stupid. <laughs> I know. It, it, it takes like. That's just that's just a Yeah, it's definitely. Video. <laughs> 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 it's definitely hard to get used to. It's like. Well, you're talking about it and having like fun, you know, working on it together. It's not at all like uh, somebody comes like to you. Yeah. Like, so, is this like sports sport where you choose more than one person to work on the same product at the same time? Or? Oh, pair programming? Yeah, what is that? Oh. You know what? I think I'm going to actually declare that off topic because I think we're out of time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you've got the post oh, set. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. But you, you've got the post session and session that we need. I do? You do. You do. Okay. Automatically. It was the post session and session. No, what time, what time is it? 3.50. Five, five, talk five, five. So like the next yeah the next hour it's like you've got the, yeah. uh, the such and such room it's like posted outside yeah you need to take everybody it's upstairs it's upstairs one of those okay. upstairs rooms yeah if anybody wants to we can talk about the pair programming is awesome <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> thank you it's really cool yeah. Candy I like awesome. this I like this short talk and then like yeah like this exercise but you know it seems like oh okay. Wow. And also the monster. I think it's a change in pressure when the fans for that for those like paper thing. I totally thought I did that. Like, what did I do? Thanks, guys. Well, it's a and it's uh, dangerous to go um, uh, well, instead of take this and just take one of these. It's like no, it's like no, it's along the bottom over there, and I'm just it's like a whole bunch of yeah, it's yeah, where you pull the tab off. Like, one of them is on the tab. The sword. Oh, I 